Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Currently, we are in the prophecy of Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament and the last book of our journey, our study, verse by verse study, chapter by chapter, book by book study, through the entire Bible. And of course, we're just going to start all over. Now, we're in chapter 2. And we are doing a slow crawl through chapter two because I'm dealing with the issue of marriage as God rebukes Israel for hating their wives and divorcing them. Like just that's the reason why they were divorcing them. And basically God is saying, and you think I'm going to be listening to you while you mistreat your wife. What is interesting about this passage, however, is that it is one of the few verses where you see God sticking up for women. Uh, and it seems that a lot of the passages about marriage, and especially treatment, <laughs> divorce, seems to favor men. Uh, for example, uh, a man could accuse his wife of cheating, and then he would bring her to the priest, and the priest would go, have you cheated? She would go, no, I didn't cheat it. Okay, here, drink this bitter, excuse me, <laughs> bitter concoction. And there, it's, it's described more accurately, of course, in, in that part of the law. It's a part of the law. If it, drink this bitter concoction, and if you're lying, your belly's going to swell and pop. But if you're not lying, eh, okay, it's just, you know, and, and, and when I think about that, I always think about, for those of you who are of age and you know what I'm talking about, if you ever had to do a, a colonoscopy and the night before when they want to clear you out, actually probably almost any procedure where they want to clean your intestines, <laughs> colon out, they have you drink this horrible drink that does just that. You know, literally, if you're going to drink it, you want to be home near the restroom because you're going to run, okay? But it is a horrible drink. But this is probably even worse. It's bitter. And yet there's no mention if the wife want, if the wife accuses the man of cheating. What, what recourse does she have? Now, I do think that she could divorce him under the, under the Old Testament law uh, of adultery. But it doesn't necessarily spell it out, <laughs> okay? It just doesn't doesn't spell it out. The man for sure, but the women uh, don't know. So, um, and the, but the other thing is too is the, that if a, a woman was caught in adultery, um, both parties, man and woman, were supposed to be stoned to death. Okay. So when we come to this verse, when he but God actually really rebukes the men for how they mistreat their wives, treating them treacherously. It's one of the few. So I wanted to kind of explore this from, again, this, I think it's important we do get this understanding from God how marriage is viewed. And throughout the centuries, including even in America, you know, because America, remember, is just what a, somewhere around the two, 250 year mark, right? I'm, I know I'm, I'm off some kind of way here, but in other words, we're young as a nation. I mean, you think about, <laughs> excuse me, other nations, but anyway, but even in our nation, and we're supposed to be, which we're not, a Christian nation based upon Christian values. We're not, okay, we're absolutely not. And, um, um, but you see, again, the misogyny of women, treatment against women, bad treatment against women, you know, and it, it, keep this in mind, what the women, I'm going to say white women got the, the, the vote in the 20s. So just think about from 1776 to 20s, women couldn't vote. So my whole point is, why is that? Well, sinful man. But I want to go back to this old the 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 idea of um of course marriage. And then I want to bring I want to show 
there, there are three kinds of marriage, you could say, in three different time frames of marriage that I want to kind of quickly review. Because where does divorce come in at? Because when you look at today, and by the way, I'll come back around to this. In this day and age, among Christians, I'm, I'm constraining this to Christians, okay? I'm you know, limited, limiting this to Christians. Divorce should be non-existent, and yet it seems like they divorce more in Christianity than they do under the law, when they did under the law. So if you get married today and you say, well, am I, you know, what does God think about then marriage? So let's bring this up because I want to just, again, I want to explore this. Uh, we don't get a chance to do this often. So, um, Again, I just, again, so I want to explore that it, it, it's good for us from a scriptural standpoint. What does God think about divorce? And more so, what does God think about marriage? I mean, let me put, I think it's more important to understand what God thinks about marriage than what God thinks about divorce. If you understand what God thinks about marriage, your perspective of divorce. So let me just say this. Uh, I've been married um, 30 plus years, and divorce is not an option, period. And I'm going to get to that. I'm going to explain why. Divorce is not an option. It's not on the table for me and my wife. It's not on the table. And I'm going to say this. Even if my wife does commit adultery, divorce is not, a, it's not an option. Okay? But I will explain that. Okay? I mean, even if my wife abused me. Now, of course, I'm being somewhat, you know, kind of tongue in cheek because usually, of course, there's, we see that the other way around. Um, but men can be mistreated just as badly by wives, okay? Um, but anyway, let's go back to, let me hear, here's Malachi chapter 14. And he asked, you asked for what reason? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth. And as I said, this has been one of the, um, you know, rare occasions where God sticks up for the women. He says, you have acted treacherously against her, though she was your marriage partner. And this is what I want to say. Notice he says right there that she's been your marriage partner and your wife by covenant. And even under the Old Testament law, here is marriage defined. Marriage defined right here. She is your marriage partner. And then your wife by covenant, and he says, and didn't God make us? Uh, didn't didn't the one God make us with a remnant uh, of His life breath? And what does the one seek? A godly offering. So watch yourself carefully, and do not act treacherously against the wife of your youth. Of your youth, if he hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord God of Israel, he covers his garment with injustice, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully and do not act treacherously. So here God says, here's how you've been treating your wife. Now, the, the different time frame that I mentioned is that one you had before sin. Before sin, okay? When God created Adam, let's go there right quick. This is um, Genesis chapter 2, and then it says, look at verse number 18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper at this compliment. So again, it's the same thing that he is saying, that the marriage or the partnership, it was a companionship. God created the institution of marriage. For that reason, it wasn't a business agreement. It, the, the idea was pleasure, love, an emotional bond, okay? That's the purpose. 
That, that's how you ought to look at marriage from God's perspective. So verse 19 says that the Lord God formed the man out of the ground. Uh, so the Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal, every bird of the sky, and brought each to the man to see what he would call it. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, birds of the sky, and to every wild animal, but for the man. No helper was found as his compliment. So it is interesting to note that they did look out of all of the wild animals of the earth, all the animals with breath, a suitable companion was not found. So when I see people who are so more bonded to their pets, there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. But sin is the reason, which we're not going to get into, but sin is the reason why. You have the perversion. You have the warped emotions and thoughts among a lot of everything else that's wrong. Sin is the reason. You trace it all the way back to sin. But so the Lord God called the deep sleep to come over the man he slept. He took his ribs and closed his flesh at the place. And the Lord God made the rib which he had taken from the man uh, into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, this one at last, meaning what? Out of all of the, out of all the creatures that they searched, this one at last is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. This one would be called woman. She was taken from man, for she was taken from man. This is why here is the universal marriage uh, principle. Uh, this is this is why this is why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife and they become one flesh. So this is so a man leaves. So think about that. Um, in a marriage, it should be between exclusively the man and his wife, not your mother, not your father, not your friends. Right. If, if, if one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make all the time is um, so many people are involved in your marriage. So many people are getting their opinions and you're seeking the opinion of so many people outside of your marriage. Big mistake, big mistake. He said, that's why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds to his wife. So there's a couple of things here about marriage from God's perspective. When he created marriage, that it wasn't just a piece of paper. It is a flesh bond that is only terminated at death. A flesh bond. Okay. In other words, so, um, and so the bond, notice the term bond, and to keep that in mind, but the term bond is why you could say divorce is not permitted. When God joins two together. It is a fusion, right? A fusion. Two flesh becoming one. Now that's the marriage. And then everything after that, the emotions, the intellect, the sexual bond between a man and his wife should be. Now that's before sin. That's before sin. So now, what changed? Well, sin changed, right? Sin changed. And let me go to Mark chapter 10. Sin changed, as well as, of course, everything on the planet Earth. Sin corrupted everything. It corrupted, okay? Now, uh, I, I want to highlight this statement here that Jesus made. Um, so 
Verse 1 says, he set out from there and went to the region of Judea and across the Jordan. The crowds co converged on him again. And as he usually did, he began teaching them once more. Some Pharisees approached him to test him. And they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? So this, so now, under the law, they were trying to, as he said, they were trying to test him. They thought they were smart. Uh, but under the law. So again, remember, you, you, we saw with Genesis what God intended for marriage, but the failure of that to fulfill that what God created in marriage, the failure of that is the sin nature. Man are slaves to sin. So now as we move on from Genesis chapter 3 on, man is corrupted, man weaknesses to sin nature. That's why we can't get along. That's why whatever, we have an inclination for lust, adultery, whatever. You can also say um, um, abuse. You trace that back to the sin nature. The world was without God, without hope, without the covenant of promise. However, within Israel, so remember this conversation is between Jesus and the Israelites, mainly the Pharisees. So this 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 is between Jesus and the Pharisees or Israel. Within the law, God gave one exception for a marriage breakup. Only one, and that was divorce. I mean, adultery. Now, as I said, when you think about it, when you read it, at least in my opinion, it's unclear. <laughs> it's unclear if the women had the same rights. Malachi seemed to suggest. For the very least that God says, mistreatment of wife uh, is wrong. But the law says that only one, if a man was to catch his wife in adultery. Now, it's just said adultery. And let's just say, let's assume then that a woman could file for divorce. But you have to understand why that's more difficult because because of sin, remember, a lot of stuff went wrong because of sin. Slavery, death, mistreatment. If you were a part of a weaker tribe and you went to war with a stronger tribe, more than likely you were going to be a slave. You were going to be either killed or in slavery, okay? So the, the idea is that the world, the sinful world was bad, okay? Now, when Israel formed and God gave Israel, God gave Israel his laws and precepts and statutes, that they were the nation who were supposed to be a separate nation, a holy nation, a separate nation, and to live by God's holy commandments. And one of those commandments was that the law, if, if, if a person f fell into adultery, that on that basis alone, a person could, um, a person could file for divorce. And, 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 and the voice was kind of simple back then to just write a piece of writing and here, we're divorced. Not The courts wasn't involved, lawyers wasn't involved, but here. Okay? Now I'm going to pick this up because Jesus makes a, a very interesting statement to that that we need to understand. That he said, yeah, he gave you that for the hardness of your heart. That's why he did that, for the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, he says, it wasn't so, and we picked it up, <laughs> excuse me. 
to pick, uh, pick this up in the next study. Um, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought, a comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I'll see you in the next study.